we are going to be concluding our thin aerofoil theory with some worked out examples. Remember the thin aerofoil theory has got a Fourier series solution for the circulation distribution over the camber line, which we are placing rather than directly on the camber line along the cord line. Thickness is completely neglected, of course. The unknowns are A1, A2, A3, AN, etc. This is the Fourier series. And we developed closed form expressions for A0 and AN as shown in here. We call it closed form, but we still need to somehow evaluate this integral. Once you have A0, A1, A2, etc., in our previous lecture, we showed that CL can be expressed in terms of A0 and A1 only, and the pitching moment at the quarter card can be written as pi over 2, 4 times A2 minus A1. So this is the theory. Now we are going to apply it to some very simple cases to see how we can get an answer for some practical problems. So I have a handwritten set of PDF notes. Unfortunately, it's handwritten. Hopefully, it's still legible. So we are going to walk through that. So I'll look at the two or three examples and show you how this is done. So the first aerofoil case we are going to do is flow over a symmetric aerofoil. Symmetric means if this is a camber line, the airfoil is equal thickness above and below. No camber. That means z of x is zero. Therefore, dz over dx is zero, completely zero. Then from the slides we saw, we developed earlier, a naught, a1, an were all defined in here. So if dz dx is zero, a naught is just alpha, an is zero. Therefore, a naught is simply alpha, a n is zero. Then what happens to CL? Two pi times a naught plus a one over two becomes two pi alpha. This becomes a very, very simple straight line curve fit passing through the origin. So when you have a zero angle of attack, a symmetric aerofoil produces zero lift. The lift curve slope is two pi. Note that the alpha has to be in radians. So in analytical work, all this alpha is radians, so this is in radians. So 2 pi is, is a slope, then alpha is in radian. How about the pitching moment coefficient? Since A2 and A3, A1 are 0, since the integrand is 0, pitching moment at the quarter card is 0. Therefore, we get a behavior that passes through the origin like this, and the pitching moment here is 0. In our course, we refer to a book by a report by Abbott and Doinhoff. So if you look at a symmetric aerofoil uh, solution from Abbott and Doinhoff, that report, if you find that the curve passes through the origin, as we expect, and the pitching moment more or less is constant and zero in this case. Notice that it's independent of alpha. So the quarter card is the center of uh, aerodynamic center. But the magnitude for a symmetric aerofoil, this works out to be zero also. How about the CD? CD is zero because of the D'Alembert's paradox. Inversive theory, no boundary layer, no separation, no skin friction drag, no pressure drag. In two dimensions, we get zero lift, zero drag rather. So let's make the case a little bit more complicated. Let's take that case and add a little bit of camber to it. Therefore, instead of a z over x equal to zero, which is a symmetric aerofoil, we have a parabolic shape. If I plot this on a graph paper, when x over c equal to zero, which is the leading edge, I'll get a zero value. When x over c equal to one, I'll get a zero value. So my camber line starts at the leading edge, ends at the trailing edge, as it should. The peak value occurs, if you take a derivative and set it to zero, it occurs at the midpoint, dz dx is zero at the midpoint. So at midpoint, this is one half, this is one half, so the height is h over c. So h over c is a small number. Remember, we're talking about very, very mild camber. So this is like 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.04, something like that, 1%, 2%, 4% camber. So we take a dz dx, take a derivative, take x over c inside. Here you get x squared. When you differentiate it, you get this expression. So this is in this form. 
but all our integrals are in theta form. If you notice it here, all these integrals involve theta. So we need to change from x to theta. So we use a change of variable x over c equal to 1 minus cosine theta naught over 2. So if you plug that in here for x over c, then you get dz over dx equal to 4h over c times cosine of theta naught. So all you have to do is take this expression and plug it into the analytical expression for a naught and a n. So plug this into a naught, then you'll get a cosine theta naught d theta naught. When you integrate this, you'll get a sine theta naught. Sine of 0 is 0, sine of pi is 0, so this integral vanishes. So a naught is simply alpha. On the other hand, a, <coughs> a1 is you get a cosine theta naught times cosine theta naught. So you get a cosine squared theta naught. Cosine squared theta naught d theta naught is cosine squared theta naught is like 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. When you integrate it, you'll get a theta over 2. Or in this case, um, in this case, you'll get a, just a, 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 a dz over dx is 4h over c. So you'll get a pi over 2 you have a 2 over pi, so that cancels out, you'll get 4h over c. So if you doubt my word, please substitute for this dz dx, this expression, cosine squared d theta will give you pi over 2, there's a 2 over pi that will cancel, leaving out only 4h over c. This is a1. Cosine 2 theta times cosine theta is 0, cosine 3 theta times cosine theta is 0, and so forth. So A2, A3, etc. will all go to 0. Therefore, the Cm, C over 2 will be pi over 2, A2 minus A1. A2 is 0, A1 is 4H over C. Therefore, you get a negative number. So you get for a cambered aerofoil, which is cambered positive up like this, you get a nose down pitching moment. The more the camber, the more the nose down pitching moment. So again, if you go to Abbott and Deinhoff book and look at uh, some of the videos, you'll find a large nose down pitching moment. Notice that this is independent of alpha. So therefore, the quarter card point is the aerodynamic center because at that point, the camber pitching moment is independent of alpha. So this is the expression for CL, A0 plus A1 over 2. So this is when alpha equal to minus 2h over c, you get cl equal to 0. So this is the angle of 0 left. So we get a straight line, but the intercept is at alpha equal to alpha naught, which is minus of 2 times h over c. This is the pitching moment. So the pitching moment is a straight line, independent of alpha, parallel to the x-axis. So I've been referring to Abbott and Dienhoff. So let's quickly look up Abbott and Dienhoff. We go to our module section. I have already listed, I have already given you the Abbott and Dienhoff in the aerofile theory background, I think, uh, or maybe in the X-File X -file homework set number one. So this is the Abbott and Dienhoff. So you can open it. It's a large file, so it'll take a long time to download it. So let me just jump to some page like uh, 200. Okay, just visualize it directly on the screen. How to visualize it. I have it uh, downloaded somewhere here. Let's let me, let me just look at my Abbott and Dienhoff here. Okay, good. Where is Abbott and Dienhoff? It's not downloaded, unfortunately, so we have to look at our. So here is an example of a NACA aerofoil. If everything is zero and nine, this means it's a nine percent thick aerofoil. It's a symmetric aerofoil. So if you look at the measured uh, CL versus alpha curve, you notice that the CL versus alpha is a straight line. It passes through the origin. That's our example number one. If you introduce camber, for example, by deflecting a flap, basically if you introduce the camber, 
immediately the curve shifts to the left, so this is your alpha naught. The slope is still parallel to the original slope, which is 2 pi, if alpha is in radians. So that's what we get in here. Okay, so this is the 2 pi alpha curve for symmetric aerofoil. This is the pitching moment. Notice that for the symmetric aerofoil, pitching moment is zero, independent of alpha. For the K-med aerofoil, for a short distance, it's zero, independent of alpha. So what are these variations that we are seeing? These variations are when the aerofoil has stalled. Okay. So depending on the Reynolds number, it'll stall at different alpha. So both the original aerofoil, which is a symmetric aerofoil, and the Cambridge aerofoil experience stall. Not only the lift shows this behavior, but also the pitching moment shows the behavior. But there is a healthy region where everything is constant, independent of alpha, independent of alpha, at the quarter cut point. So we are returning back to our worked out example. So for the Cambridge aerofoil, the pitching moment at the quarter card is independent of alpha. The lip curve curve is, because it's a straight line, just as we saw in our previous, previous uh, Abbott Dinehoff book. Now let's look at one last example. This is a symmetric aerofoil with a flap. So if you look at just the card line, this is symmetric, this is symmetric except this part is deflected back by delta. So let's say this hinge point is x of flap, that's the hinge point. So the camber line is dz over dx is zero up to the x flap. Downstream of the x flap, the slope is negative number equal to minus delta, where delta is in radians. So I'm going to have to integrate the x flap is a distance like quantity. So first thing we will do is we'll convert the distance quantity into an angular quantity based on this relation. For example, x x flap is 75% uh, chord. This is 75.75. If you multiply by 2, you'll get 1.5. That means this should be negative of 0.5. That means the phi must be 120 degrees. Cosine of 120 degrees is minus of 0.5. There's a minus here. 1 plus 0.5 by 2 will be 75% core. So anyways, if x of is known, we can find phi. So this is our expression for alpha now, a naught and a n from our thin aerofoil theory. x of the dz dx is 0 up to x of downstream of xf, that means up to angle theta naught equal to phi, we don't get any slope, we only get from phi to pi, and that slope is constant. So we could analytically integrate this expression, minus delta is a constant, that will come out, it become plus delta over pi, the integral will be pi minus phi. So we can solve for the a naught. How about the a n? This is a dz over dx is a constant minus delta pi to, to pi. Cosine and theta is sine and theta, so you have to integrate it, put the limits from theta pi to pi, then you'll get sine n theta naught over n. So this is a n. So we can solve for a naught plus a1. All you have to do is put n equal to 1. a2 will produce sine 2 phi, a1 will produce sine phi. So you'll get a closed form expression for a symmetric aerofoil with a flap deflection. We notice that we get a 2 pi alpha, which is a original straight line lift, plus some extra lift due to the deflection of the flap. So when we deflect the flap, we are increasing the lift because we are changing the camber. Notice that the increment in the lift is linearly proportional to alpha. How about the pitching moment? It's a negative number. Therefore, we get a nose turn pitching moment. The more we deflect the flap, the more the nose turn pitching moment we get. It's proportional to the amplitude of deflection of the flap, where delta is in radians. Okay. So going back to our Abbott and Dinehoff book, the more you deflect that flap, the more negative this number will become. Okay. If you have a zero deflection flap, you get a zero lift for a symmetric airfoil. The more you deflect, 
the more the lift you get. So deflecting the flap produces lift. This is why an airplane, when it takes off and lands, it uses high lift systems to, to produce excess lift. You could also deflect the nose part of it, which is the slat. Then you have a highly cambered surface. Then you get a lots of lift during takeoff and landing. So these are our three worked out examples. We have completed them. So please review it. And uh, you may have a problem like this in the, perhaps in a quiz you may take if you're taking this course for credit. Otherwise, if you want to solve analytically, this is primarily the approach that you would have to take. So if you have completed our thin aerofoil theory, we have looked at three worked out examples. So we conclude this particular video.